All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the Faith Connection Prayer Call here from Hope Everlasting Ministry. Uh, we don't own the rights to the music that is being played, but we are definitely enjoying it. Uh, uh, song here from uh, B C C Wine is entitled Holy Forever. So grateful to be with you this evening here for the Faith Connection prayer call on this Tuesday evening. Uh, Minister Calvin Dickey, God bless you, sir. Thank you for being in with us this evening. Uh, so grateful to have you. Uh, looking forward to uh, your return back. Uh, excited about uh, having you on this evening. So uh, looks like we have people pouring in. We're, we're quickly approaching the top of the hour at 7 o'clock. Mother Sandra Fay, how are you? Thank you for being on this evening, Sister Tawanda. How are you? Thank you so much for coming in this evening for the Faith Connection prayer call. It is 7 o'clock p.m., so we came in just a little bit later than we normally do. So if you guys don't mind, if we can give this till 7.03. We'll be ready to go at 7.03. Uh, Sister Adriana Young, God bless you. Thank you for being on as well. Sister Gigi, God bless you. Thank you for being in as well. Uh, go ahead and tell Brother Michael we said hello. Sister Lakeisha Powell, thank you for being on as well. Sister Loretta South, God bless you. Uh, thank you for being on. Our bishop is on, Bishop Vernon Presley. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Please, please tell Mother Betty uh, that we said hello this evening. Sister Felicia Harden, thank you so much for being in. Uh, Brother Steve Robinson, how are you, man? Thank you so much for being in. My frat brother's in here this evening. God bless you, man. Thank you for being in. We ask uh, you guys to please take a moment and hit the share button. There may be somebody out there that want to be a part of this time of prayer with us on this evening. Mother E.C. Johnson, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for being in. Pastor James Reed is in with us of the Faith Temple Church there in Oxford, Alabama. Uh, thank you so much, my brother. So grateful to have uh, the connection that we have and so grateful for your diligence, your teaching, your preaching ministry. Uh, so grateful. We're doing well on this end, sir. Just, uh, continuing to, uh, trust God for his word and, uh, praying and, and, uh, continuing to have faith. So, uh, thank you so much for asking. Uh, we ask that as you guys are pouring in, uh, go ahead and uh, hit the share button. What we will do this evening is we're going to be very intentional. Sean Dowdy, what's up, man? God bless you. Thank you for being on. Uh, we're going to be very intentional in this time of prayer and praying uh, for the nation of Israel. We're going to be very intentional about praying for leadership and wisdom of our world, national and local leaders, uh, praying for our military, uh, praying for the mental and spiritual well-being of our children. Uh, so we want to be very, very intentional this evening over some topics in partic particular that we're praying for. And as we always do here on the Faith Connection prayer call, we're always intentional about the wisdom to win souls. And um, and uh, also uh, praying for those that are working there at the southern border. We have a uh, good brother of ours is being deployed to the southern border for two weeks I mean, for two months, I'm sorry, for two months, uh, having to be away from his family. We're praying for those that are being deployed to the southern border. So it is 7.03. Uh, I see uh, Minister Edward Mullen. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your leadership, your faithfulness. Uh, God bless you. That's right. We absolutely stand in solidarity, uh, Pastor James Reed. We stand in solidarity in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right, so let us uh, go ahead and go forth in prayer uh, during this time we have for what is called the Faith Connection Prayer Call. I want to welcome you here to the Faith Connection Prayer Call. This is where we come together. We come to connect our faith with your faith, to believe God by faith for that which you are believing God for. Let us go forth in prayer. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come thanking you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your grace. And we do thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your love, your joy, your peace, and for your long suffering. God, we come tonight praying together, believing by faith, God, that as we call on your name, we are the righteousness of God. And we believe that your word is true in our lives, that when the righteous cry, not only do you hear us, God, but you deliver on the request in which we have. Lord, we come tonight 
uh, in solidarity, praying for the nation of Israel. God, we're praying now in Jesus Christ's name that you uh, cover and keep Israel. God, we know that your word is true that teaches us that you that keep Israel, you neither slumber nor do you sleep. And God, we come now in solidarity, praying uh, for the nation of Israel. God, we're praying for uh, the leadership there. We're praying for their military. God, we're praying uh, God, we know that innocent souls are, are at stake uh, here in this uh, warfare, God. But we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ that you cover them and keep them now in Jesus Christ's name. God, we're praying for leadership and wisdom uh, of, of world leaders, uh, not only world leaders, but national leaders and local leaders. God, we're praying now uh, for our president, the president of the United States of America. God, we're praying for uh, Brother Joe Biden, God, we lift him up before you now, God, we're praying in Jesus Christ's name as he makes a trip to Israel, God, we're praying uh, as the leader of the free world, God, we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ that they'll be able to come to the table and reason uh, together in these, uh, in whatever the talks are with regard to what uh, we're seeing, what we're encountering now in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we're praying for our national leaders, God, we're praying in Jesus Christ's name, God, that people will take time to move themselves aside and make you the priority on the agenda. God, that you will be the agenda. The agenda will be about Jesus and not our own personal priorities. God, we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ that in these difficult times that we're living in, God, that people will push aside, push aside political agendas, push aside colors, God, and see only one color, and that is the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ to move in a supernatural way. God, there are people that are held hostage tonight, God, and they need to be released back into the arms of their families. God, we understand that lives have been lost on both sides, God, but we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that national and world leaders will look past agendas, look past uh, ideologies, God, and see you, God, see you as our only risen Savior. God, we're praying for our local leaders, God, as we're seeing on the news right before us, young people uh, dying in the streets, God, killing one another with, with through senseless violence, God. We're we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ, God, for our local leaders, God, as they are uh, are, are are set to make decisions, God, whatever those decisions are. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, God, that those decisions will be regarded that the people uh, in our nation, in our states, in our cities, in our region, in our counties, God, that the people will be considered when decisions are making. But more importantly than the people being considered, God, we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ that people will consider you over themselves in Jesus' name. God, we're praying tonight for our military, God. We, we understand that people are being deployed all over the world, God. We're praying for those that are being deployed to the southern border tonight, God. We're praying for their families, God. Sometimes we look beyond what we are and forget that there are things happening right here in our own communities, in our own nation, in our own states. And God, we're praying right now for the safety of those that are being deployed there to that southern border, away from their families, God. And we're, we're praying for all of our military tonight, God, worldwide. God, we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ, God, for safety in Jesus Christ's name. God, we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ that you cover them and keep them now in Jesus' name, God. We, we're, we're in need of you. And God, we're praying now that you, that we know that not only do you hear us, God, but you're delivering on the request in which we have. God, we're praying tonight for the mental and spiritual well-being of our young people. God, we're seeing young people are, are living in depressed states. We're seeing young people are uh, living oppressed. God, we're seeing young people uh, living li lives like we've never seen because they're encountering things that we've never encountered. God, we're praying for them tonight for their mental and spiritual well-being. God, we ask you to keep them covered now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we pray now for their decision making. God, we ask you now to to cover and keep their minds and their spirits. Lord, help them to keep their minds stayed on you, God, so that you will keep their minds in perfect peace. God, we're praying against bullying spirits tonight, God, that will that are, that leave homes and go out to others and and and, and bully uh, other young children. God, we're praying 
in Jesus Christ's name, God, for that that spirit not to be a part of the lives of our children. Lord, we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ for the body of Christ, God. We're praying, and we we believe by faith that the body of Christ will rise up and be stronger than the body has ever been before, God, that we'll rise up and be the people that you have destined and ordained for us to be, God. We'll be the people that rise up in our world, in our nation, in our state, in our communities, God, so that people will be able to see an example of what it means to, to, to live a life set aside, separated, sanctified for the use of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask you now, God, as we pray for those who are sick amongst us, God, there are people that are physically sick amongst us, God, there are people that are spiritually sick amongst us, God, there are people that are sin sick among us, God, we ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ, God, to, to heal those who are sick amongst us, God, there are some that have connected with us this evening, God, they're brokenhearted, God, we're praying now in Jesus Christ's name, Lord, that you heal the brokenhearted tonight, God, you, you know the needs, you know the desires, you know exactly where people are, God, and we ask you now, God, and we believe by faith, not only do you know where they are, God, but we believe by faith that you will meet them right at the point of their knees. God, we know that you are God and besides you there is none other. God, we believe by faith that you are the same God, the God who told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God, the same God that you told Moses that I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you, God. We know that you are the same God that said that to Moses, God, and you still remain the same God who said it to Joshua, God, and we believe by faith, God, that you'll never leave us, God, you'll never forsake us, God, we thank you, God, that even in our most difficult times, even when it seems like you're not there, even when we can't trace you, God, we ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ to give us a heart and a mind that we can trust you when we can't trace you. God, we still believe that the importance of the body of Christ is still today to win souls to you. And Lord, we're praying now according to Proverbs 11 and 30. God, your word teaches us that those who win souls are wise. God, we ask you that souls continue to be the pro continue to be the primary focus of the body of Christ. God, to, to be able to have the boldness to go out and tell someone that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, we're praying tonight in Jesus Christ's name intently, God, for the deliverance in the minds of those, God, that their, their minds are weakened right now, God, through 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 things they, they, they've gotten involved in, God, but we still believe, God, that your word is true in their lives, God, that, that teaches us, uh, uh, God, that there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, according to Romans 8, verse number 1. God, we ask you now in the name of Jesus as we come together now and we bind the spirit of condemnation, God. We bind the spirit of self-guilt, God. We bind the spirit of self-doubt, God. We bind the spirit of self-condemnation. We ask you now in the name of Jesus to move in the minds of those who are struggling tonight mentally, God. Move in the hearts of those, God. Their hearts may be broken tonight, God. We, we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, that you're covering and keeping the minds of your people tonight. You're covering and keeping the spirits of your people tonight. And God, there's somebody tonight that is listening to us, God, and they don't know you as their personal Savior. They don't know you uh, as their Lord and Savior. God, we're praying tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you will move in them and through them. Now, God, cause them to throw their hands up and surrender and have a desire to know you like never before, God, and we believe by faith. God, that not only are you going to move into them, God, but I, I believe by faith, God, that you will come into them, God, redeem them, God, de deliver them, set them free now in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we know that we live a life of afflictions, God, but we still believe that your word is true according to Psalm 34 and 19, God, your word teaches us that many are the afflictions of the righteous but you, the Lord, has delivered us out of them all. God, we thank you for delivering us out, God, and, and helping us to stay out, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come to you tonight, God, standing in the need of you, God. We need you now like never before, God. If we've never prayed to you before, God, if we've never trusted you before, God, we're watching, uh, 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 we're watching scripture play out right in front of our eyes, and God, we Asking now in Jesus Christ's name, God, to move in a supernatural way, God, to, 
to heal our the brokenhearted, God, to, to watch over our children, God, to cover them and keep them as they live through these difficult times, Lord. Bless marriages tonight, families tonight, God. Let the family unit be stronger than it's ever been before. God, we thank you tonight, God, that we'll bind together. Be stronger than we've ever been before. God, we bind the hand of the enemy that will try to come against us, to try to turn us against one another. God, we, we thank you, God, that you are, that you're bringing families closer, closer together. God, you're bringing marriages closer together. God, you're bringing children and parents closer together like never before. God, we're praying now in the name of Jesus Christ. We won't give up. We believe by faith that you hear us. And Lord, not only do you hear us, God, but you're delivering on the request in which we have. Lord, we come tonight thanking you, thanking you for your healing anointing, God, that's moving in us and through us now. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, there are some amongst us that, that have that have whispered prayers to you, God, but we want them to have an assurance that, God, not only have you heard their prayers in, in their secret place, God, we believe by faith that you're going to reward openly those prayers that have been prayed in secret. God, we thank you tonight. We give your name honor. We give your name glory. And we give your name praise. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to take a minute tonight just to, I want to share this with you tonight. This, everything that we see happening, uh, it right before us, uh, with regard to Israel and, and all these things, guys, guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's, it's really, uh, it's really affected me to the point where it's caused me to, to dig deeper into understanding why we're seeing the things that we're seeing right before our eyes. Why does it seem that a place that is so small, the, the, the nation of Israel, is no bigger than the state of New Jersey, densely populated with over two million people, this little small place, it seems like people uh, all around them hate them so much that they just want to completely conquer them. And sometimes we hear, sometimes we hear, um, uh, we hear the words God's chosen people. They are God's chosen people, God's chosen people. And sometimes in our minds, we'll begin to wonder, well, so, and, and I'm going to talk about this more in the next couple of weeks or so, but I just want to give you a, a little piece of this tonight. Sometimes we ask that question, why are they in particular God's chosen people? Here's what I want to give you some insight into. You have to understand that these are God's chosen people, not so much because of them as people, but more because of who they came out of. We remember what God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. He told him to leave his father's house, go to a place. He said, I'll, if you go to this place, if you leave everything where you are right now, your kindred and everybody else, he said, I will take you to a place and I'll show you. I'll show you that place when you get to that place. And because of Abraham's obedience, he said to him, he said, I'll make your name great. He said, I'll make you a great nation. He said, I'll make your name great. And then he told him, he said, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Those are three promises that God made to Abraham. And in those three promises that God made to Abraham, God had to bless what came out of Abraham. It started not just so much about the people, but it started because of the obedience of one man, not a perfect man, not a man who did everything the way God told him to do it, but this, the result of the children of Israel being God's, what people will call God's chosen people, came, watch this, because he chose a man, the man Abraham, who lived a life of faith, a life of obedience. It says that he was so faithful that God called him friend. So it was so, it was more about God chose a man, hear me, this, hear me now, and the man chose to be obedient. And as a result of the man choosing to be obedient, the people that came out of the man was blessed because of the man's obedience. And because God makes a promise to Abraham with regard to the people, God has to keep his word. That's the thing I love about God. He is a covenant keeping God and what it comes down to is when we keep covenant with him he keeps covenant with us here's the blessing there are times that we don't keep covenant with him and he still keeps covenant with us here's the blessing in it all we have to understand 
that these same blessings that lie upon the children of Israel because of the obedience and the faith of Abraham, they come unto us because we were engrafted into the family of Jesus through our faith in, in believing who Jesus Christ is. But here's three things that I'm going to assure you that God will do, and, we, and not only will he do this on behalf of the children of Israel, but he'll do this on your behalf as well. Let me, show, let me share three things with you that it's an assurance that God will restore the children of Israel, just like he'll restore things that you may feel you've lost, things that have happened in your life. So there are three things that are going to happen, and I'm going to show you how he's going to do it. Number one, verse number Isaiah 61, starting at verse number four. Isaiah chapter 61, starting at verse number four, it says, Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. What we're seeing right before us is, is ruins. It looks like it will never be rebuilt. It looks like it will never come back to form. Things that happen in your life, it looks like it will never come back to form. But what we've got to trust is God will, number one, he will rebuild the ruins. Those ruined places, those places that look like they will never be reconciled, they look ruined. God will, number one, he will rebuild the, rebuild the ancient ruins. Number two, he will raise up the former devastations, those devastating things, those devastating places in your life. God, watch this, he will, he will raise up the former devastations and they will repair the ruined city. So there's three things that God will do. He's going to rebuild, he will raise up, and he will repair. Some people ask the question, how can this happen for them when we wonder where the resources will come from? And let's look at us. How would this happen for us when I don't necessarily have the resources because it feels like I've lost everything. But when you're obedient to God, here's what it, the promise comes. In verse number 5, Isaiah chapter 61, and here's what verse number 5, remember verse number 4 says, And then they will rebuild the ancient ruins, they will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined places. I'm going to get more into this in the next couple of weeks. But here's how it's going to get done. It says, the desolations of many generations. Here's how it will get done. It says, strangers will stand and pasture your flocks, and foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. People that you don't even know will be people that come along and bless you. How will God do this for the children of Israel? People they don't even know, allies, the people that they don't even realize that they have allies with, God, when he speaks and says, this is how it's going to get done, this is what we have to do. We have to have the faith, the trust, and the obedience that if God says they will rebuild, raise up, and repair, and you don't have to worry about who it, how it gets done, he will send you the help that you need, watch this, even from people you don't know. It says strangers will stand and pasture your flocks. That means people will rise up for you, hallelujah, that may not necessarily have been for you before. People will rise up for you, and you don't even know them. You don't have to know people in order for God to move on them to be a blessing for you. Lord, have mercy. You got to get this. Strangers will stand and pastor your flocks. Watch this. Even when you don't have everything you need to get done what you need to get done, God will send you the help to get it done. Folks, you don't even know. He says strangers will do this for you. See, a lot of times we're waiting on people that we know to do stuff for us when God has assigned people that you don't even know to get things done for you. He said, he said they, they will, they, strangers will stand and pasture your flocks and foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. Mm. I don't have to know how it's going to happen. I don't know, I don't have to know who's going to do it. I don't have to know when it's going to happen. All I need to know is if God said it's going to happen, he's going to rebuild, raise up, and repair, even if he has to send the people to me that I don't even know to get it done for me. Hallelujah. i got to stop this. But listen, I'm going to spend some time on this in the next couple of weeks. I promise you. I'm going to spend some time on this in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to help you understand 
that all these blessings that we see happening for the children of Israel, it's, it's coming. It's going to come back. It's going to be repaired. It's going to be restored. It's going to be rebuilt. It's going to be raised up. Same thing that God is doing for them. The same word that applies to them today, it applies to you. You think you've lost everything. No, uh uh-uh. You haven't lost everything. You just hadn't gotten everything yet. So I'm going to spend some time with this, and I'm going to help you understand that God's word not only applies to the children of Israel, but it applies to us who believe when we have faith and trust God and and we're obedient to him. These are the things that not that God is going to do, these are the things that he's already done. And Pastor Reed, Bishop Presley, all it's going to take is for us to walk into the manifestation of what has already been done by God. Here, here's, here's the last thing, and I'm done. Here's the last thing. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3 says, But thanks be to God, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You have been blessed with everything that you need, and all you've got to do is continue to walk in it because God is going to rebuild, he's going to raise up, and he's going to repair because he's already blessed me with everything I need to see it happen. So let's continue. Pray for the children of Israel. Pray for the nation of Israel. These are God's people because they came out of God's man. And just like these people came out of God's man, we are children of faith. We are, have been engrafted into the family of Christ. And we can trust and believe that just as God has done it for them, God is doing it for us. We've just got to stay obedient and continue to trust what God's word says. So listen, I'm completely done tonight, but thank you so much for joining us here for the Faith Connection Prayer Call. This is where we come together to connect our faith with your faith to believe God by faith for that which you are believing God for. Listen, God bless you all, and I pray that you have an amazing evening in the Lord. God bless you, and we'll see you again real soon.